Hello everyone, it's Margaret here with 60 and Me. Hope you're doing great today. I've got a good topic today. It's about money. Yes, it's true. It was a smile. <laughs> Nobody wants to talk about money, right? But I wanted to ask of you, do you overspend? I want to talk about financial discipline and some strategies for achieving that. Now, um, I think I will start with my story because it's so relevant to this conversation, but I won't take too long on it because it went over 10 years. The whole process of getting through my debts after the 2008 crash was um, was like a story that many of you, I'm sure, could tell. But I lost a lot and I had to regroup. I had a lot of credit card debt, as we all did during that time and uh, I had to really piece my life together. It also coincided with my family leave, uh, work living to, in the UK and me feeling very alone in a place that I was just in debt. And it took me a good, I think five or six years to get in a, a handle on everything, making phone calls, making planning uh, payment plans, talking to people, working through with uh, you know attorneys, what my options were, but fighting it out. And I got through it without declaring bankruptcy or doing anything like that. But I was left with very little. I had no no money, no possessions, no house, no car, no, um, you know, nothing that was of any great monetary value. But I had my freedom and I moved on. So that's, but my story is basically, the reason I tell you this is that I went through everything to do with um, overspending in those days leading up to the crash. And to be honest with you, I didn't learn some lessons. You know, I mean, I got back on my feet again. I, I, I started being able to save again a bit and, and feeling in charge of my finances, having some discipline. But even now I overspend and I know I do. And fortunately this time, they're all little things like makeup and, you know, small purchases that I can manage in my budget. You know, I can manage my monthly budget, but it's fixed. It's a fixed budget. And I, you know, I'm just like many of you. So I want you to understand that I've been through this. I'm not talking from a position of, um, uh, you know, not understanding. So financial discipline, overspending, um, spending patterns and generations. Now, I was looking at this article and I'm going to actually refer to it because I want to make sure I get the facts right here. It, it, this whole conversation started, one of our bloggers, Beverly Bowers, wrote this article on our 60 and Me channel. And it was all about um, this, the changes in, fi in financial spending between generations. During the COVID um post-COVID, excuse me, post-COVID, there was an increase in credit card debt and expenses by guess who? Boomers. G Generation X and uh, millennials and Gen Z actually decreased their spending. Now, part of it was that, um, you know, the, I guess the, the, in the United States, the, um, uh, was it the COLA, the cost of living uh, um, index for, for boomers was increased. We got a little bit more money in our social security, but um, it was just generally a statistic that boomers spent more. Well, why did they do that? Well, the, the, the boomer spending splurge after COVID is, is kind of explainable, but if you think about how young people are influenced uh, to spend money, it's mostly by their friends. And if their friends are all in the same kind of situation, uh, you know, there's not that kind of aspiration. Uh, they just have to live within their means. Well, many didn't, of course, or don't uh, still. But the, the, the reason that boomers were spending is quite interesting. Uh, now, we all face challenges. Uh, we all, they had the student loan repayment challenges, still do. And the, this, you know, the, the battle for re, with the recession and other inflationary concerns means that we're all kind of in this together. So I'm not singling out boomers, but I think there's something unique about us, you know, about our 60 plus year uh, people who um, helps us to understand why we overspend. Okay, are you ready for this? Put on your, I feel like I listen to, be, to, to honesty mindset because it, it doesn't feel good when you know that you're making some decisions that are causing you some some challenges so reasons for overspending as i mentioned younger generations want to spend to be like their friends to keep up with their friends lifestyle boomers overspend because they want to um feel well one thing experiences they feel like they've done everything for everybody else all their lives they didn't do that trip they didn't do that that fantasy thing they wanted to do and now they feel like well there's you know, I'm running out of years and I'm going to do it. I, I, I need to do something for myself. And there's actually nothing wrong with that. And it is one of my overspending um, areas. Like I love to travel. So when I think about, oh, there's a really great value on this cruise. I think, well, when am I ever going to get to, you know, Dubrovnik again? And I, I use that logic that, you know, I want to overcompensate for maybe having to spend money in other places uh, when I was younger. Uh, the empty nest syndrome in general, you know, where we think, well, Okay, I've been saving all this time for my family, for my children. I'm going to take some of that and use it for myself, you know, for my own passions, my own desires and wants. And I think that's one of the 
kind of pivots for um, boomers who are spending more um, as they get a little bit older. Do you, I mean, by the way, as you listen to me talking, I'm just kind of you know reading from my notes and thinking about it and uh, from my own experiences. But maybe you can say that's not true, Margaret, at all. That's that's I'm really happy to be saving my money for my grandchildren. And I don't really have any desire to do anything for myself. But l l you know, put that in the comment section, because I really would like to understand whether that's you. I mean, so there's redirecting funds that we're allocating to someone else. I'm going to do it myself. And that kind of goes along with the desire for experiences. You know, we've had um, uh, maybe, well, I just got back from a, a trip to Centre Parks in France with my, with my grandchildren. And it was so interesting because I was, you know, my son and his, his, his wife were spending money on experiences for the kids, you know, and it was like, is it, you know, they're stretching their budgets too. And it's all, you do it for the children because like it's, it's cool. But then I think, you know, do we do that for ourselves? Do we ever just do an experience because it's kind of something we've never done before or we just want to, you know, go out and have it, even if it's, it's as simple as something, uh, having a meal, you know, going to a new restaurant, having even a different cup of coffee somewhere. I mean, just like doing something different. Um, I, I actually do have one little problem with, um, with coffee because um, I don't know, miraculously, I don't know why it happens. <laughs> the coffee tastes better at the coffee shop. Go figure. You know, and so I go into into town and I do my shopping, my food shopping, and I'm very and again strict to my budget. And then I think, oh, I like to sit down, just have a look at my phone, we could check my messages. It's five francs, five dollars for a cup of coffee, and I think, oh, I deserve it. Sit down, five dollars gone. Now I have solved that sometimes by taking a thermos of coffee, but it's not the same. <laughs> It's just, you know, you know what I'm talking about. Health and wellness becomes a real issue for book for people in over 60. And that's a great place where we can like to spend our money. Not just when we have to, because like when I have a hospital stay or when you have some emergency, but it's just taking care, like, you know, taking supplements or making sure you, um, you know, you add nutrient food that's maybe it's bio food or it's a little bit healthier or you decide to buy that thinner or that better cut of meat or chicken or whatever. You know, there's things you do to say, yeah, I just need I deserve to be healthy. And what we actually have asked several times, uh, what's your main concern over 60? And it's all health, health and well-being health and, um, you know, pre preparing for, um, you know, longer, longer life and what we're going to have to be doing to stay healthy and long. So medical bills, of course, health insurance goes up. If you are traveling, travel insurance goes up. Everything changes with your health when you're in your 60s. So that's a super, super big um, one that you, where people feel they've got to protect themselves, save, even save. Another thing though that's really um, true in so many women, and I have been in this situation myself, is helping your younger children. Helping your children and giving financial help to your adult children or your grandchildren. You know, they're going, maybe the grandchildren are going to, to, into school or into uh, co even college. If some of you had children, your grandchildren were young or older now. And um, you just you feel like you just, well, look, they don't need it when I'm not here anymore. They need it now. They need to get in that graduate program. They need to pay their rent, whatever it is. You know, you, you can go through that. But that's another reason. So, of course, there's peer pressure. And a lot of people, when they're older, are cashing in their IR, um, um, Roth IRAs and other you know, pension things. And some of them have bought houses 20, 30, 40 years ago and now selling them for eight times, 10 times the price. So they've got money, they've got, you know, they've got cash. And I think that there's this um, desire sometimes to live up to their standards, you know, that you, well, why, they, why can't I have that too? I want that new dress. I want that, you know, instead of just saying, no, I'm going to thrift this or I'm going to do that with less money. You think, well, I've, I've got to, I've got to, um, you know, that, that, you know, spend more money. I've got to overspend in order to stay up. Um, delayed gratification. I think that's what I was mentioning later that you want to, um, you know, take advantage of the situation that you're in now that's where the, the years are more limited and you maybe you want to do it before you get, you know, I mean, for me, example, I always say, I'm going to go on a, a train journey around Europe. I want to do that. It would cost me quite a bit of money, of my money, and but it would be wonderful. It's something I never will do again. It'd be my one-time thing. And then I think, and then I say my next phrase is, before I don't physically feel like going. I think, well, when is that going to be? Well, I'm 74. That could be tomorrow. I mean, it could be any time if something happens or I get sick or, you know, whatever. By the way, I do have a cold and it's just a cold. And, um, you know, just, uh, you know, maybe I should just do it now. I've got to do it before I'm 75. I've got to do it before I'm 80, whatever. And you sort of put this pressure on yourself to do things um, now, right now. No, no waiting for it. Um, Finally, well, there's more. There's a couple more. One is increased access to debt to credit. 
you know, as you get older, you've got a big history, a credit history. And unless you're very disciplined and don't want to use credit cards, you know, then you've got them right there to use. Oh, it's so tempting. Um, retirement ambiguity. Yeah, we've got, you know, the, the whole thing about what is retirement about? Is it about minimalist living where you just don't spend money anymore? Or is it about taking the money that you have and doing as, as you know, more, more with it, overspending? So emotional spending, of course, th is the thread through all of this. If you buy because you um, are emotionally connected either to the process of shopping because it gives you something nice. The ordering is not as good as the receiving always in the sense of emotional, um, you know, sort of justification. But maybe that's, a, you know, the strategies for doing this in more detail is another article, another another conversation. But um, I think it's very useful to, to think about it. Are you an overspender? And why? And what strategies are you using? right now to, to, to recreate some or to create some kind of financial discipline. I know money's not a fun subject. I hope you, well, those of you who are still left, thank you. I'm sure lots of people just tuned out like, yeah, yeah, yeah. She's telling me everything I know, blah, blah, blah. Margaret, come on. We know that this is true. Well, I just have to remind you every now and again because I need to remind myself every now and again. <laughs> So anyway, take good care, everybody. Go out into the world and shine with your pennies. You don't need to spend a ton of money. Just enjoy this beautiful life and know that we love you. Okay, take care.